All right, so today we decided we were gonna give you a longer video. And one of the things that we wanted to talk to you about is key players or people that you need on your development team. And I see a development as always being a team. I'm a re relational guy and I see the people and the people make up the project. And so these are all the different people that make up a project and, and they all play different roles throughout um, this process. So we have entitlement, that's obviously working to engineer something that the city will accept. And um, you can process that through the city through a process that we call entitlements. And that's just doing the paperwork necessary to have something that the, the city's willing to accept. Then you have um, the development period, which is a phase that has to do with, you know, your utilities running roads, the dirt work side of it. And then you have the building side, which we call vertical, which is going and, and building the actual buildings on there. So with that being said and pre-noted, here's some of the players. It's a long list and we could have gone longer, but we thought that this pretty much sums up a majority of development and the players that need to be involved in development. So one of the first things you always want to see is, do you have the money, investors, lenders? Do you have the capacity to do what you're, you're wanting to do with the land? Obviously, you also have to have a landowner involved. That's the land side of things, uh, or you are the landowner yourself. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I've done both of those. Uh, as well as you want to have a buyer. One of the, the biggest things that I think is a downfall with our industry that causes a lot of um, risk and legal contractual binding is because nobody has an end user in mind. And so normally what we're trying to do, and, and we have a tool that we use, which is NAXA. It's a tool that helps us bring the opportunity and the end buyer to each other at the same time. So from the get-go, I can see my uh, acquisition or my purchase as well as my exit strategy, the disposition. So that's why I listed it so high here is because buyers are really important, understanding who you're doing this for. Why are we doing this project, right? Who's going to want it? Who's going to want to... Uh, buy that. So that's really important. Having good engineers. There's structural engineers that are involved. For example, structural would be dealing with the buildings and, and going vertical. Your civil engineers are doing the horizontals or horizontal development, which is like your uh, utilities, roadways, curb gutter, asphalt, that kind of stuff, uh, drainage. And um, then you also have your architects and they're playing a role throughout this process as well with your engineers. They're going to be involved throughout this whole process. And uh, from the architect side, when you're working with city and we're going to talk to that, but you have different architectural committees within the city and they require to see what we call elevations and schematics or design of what it is you're gonna put on the property, what the end product's gonna look like, and it has to meet certain re code requirements. So that's really important uh, to understand is that you're gonna need these, these guys throughout the whole entire process. And then you have your land planner, and the land planner um, can play a role throughout some of these things, but most importantly, they're playing a role right in here. They're trying to make the cut up or the subdividing of the land to be its most efficient as possible. And so they're really crucial to the process. There's designers, again, that's dealing with architects and designing a plan that the city's gonna accept as well as understanding that you're designing for your end buyer and what they want to see in an end product. So that's really important. Then you have your city staff and council you have to work with. So city staff and council are obviously uh, really important when walking through the process of entitlement. 
You want to make sure that the city staff has represented you really well to the commission bodies, which is a recommending body, and then also the actual decision makers, which are the council members. And so you need to make sure that you prep city staff really well to be able to represent the project in, in the light that we're trying to do it. And um, so that's really important that you incorporate them as a, as a team member as part of this process. And then you have council. You need to make sure that you articulate really well with city staff to the recommended body of commission and then also the decision makers council uh, membership your project in a way that they understand because not all of them are developers they're just volunteering and trying to support the community uh, most of the times where they're residing and, and stuff like that so uh, anyways just make sure you can ar articulate and work with them in a way they have Council has work sessions that you can take something to that's before a public hearing or anything like that, where you can work with them in a closed room a little bit that uh, allows you to walk through some of the details so that when you do get in front of the community that they're aware of your project and what's going on and they're prepped to uh, meet the community concerns, if any. Now the community is really important as well. We do a lot to get in front of the community and take their input. Obviously they're residents in the area and they just want to see what's best for the community. And if they're on board, obviously council's going to be on board. So for example, we had a project that was in Hurricane, Utah. It was uh, down south and in this project, the staff and everybody was saying no, and the commission body actually recommended a no. But we had gone around to the different community members and we had uh, gotten letters from them of support for our project. And so ultimately when it got in front of the council, the recommended body, the recommended body got together and they said, hey, if they have all the support of the people, the community who we serve, why are we antagonistic like why are we going against it so they ultimately gave us a positive recommendation and a positive uh, approval and we moved forward and that was all because we had worked with the community a bunch so that's really really an important piece to enroll them as part of your team see them as part of the team take into consideration uh, all that they're saying and we've held huge meetings before. We, we had a, a big meeting up in Eden, Utah that had uh, over a hundred and something people show up from the community. And we had a board just like this with our project blown up. And what we did is we let them see it. We took notes from their concerns and we went back and, and made some adjustments according to their comments. And so that was a way for us to maintain peace with the community and a good relationship. So we try to, we try to do that again. I said, like I said, we're, we're relationship people. I think the project is a relationship thing. It's not just a, an eight thing. It's not just a dollar thing. It's all about relationships and handling those relationships with care and with non-agendized um, concern. So really take the community staff and council into consideration and make sure that your architects, your land planners, your designers, your engineers, all are on the same page in the way things are being articulated and understood. So that's important. Then you have county, state, government fed. For example, if you're dealing with any wetlands, been involved in that. The federal government gets involved in making sure that you're designing something that's maintaining the wetlands and not putting the project at risk or the wetlands, mother nature at risk. I've done a lot of development around uh, government property, BLM to whatever it is. And it's good to take their comments and, and uh, uh, communication throughout that process. So again, that's another enrollment process. You have your utility companies. Obviously, they got to be able to provide you a will serve letter or saying they have the capacity to do what it is you're saying to do. 
And so you have to work with them and their team in designing out a plan that facilitates the project's success and also maintains uh, the integrity of what they already currently have within the community utility plans. So that's really important. Then you have UDOT Transit. A lot of times, for example, UDOT, they, they uh, have some strict requirements uh, for access when you're accessing out onto their roads. And you just want to make sure you understand that, that they're on board and that they uh, grant those accesses, uh, those access needs for your project to kind of rotate traffic and different things like that. Which kind of takes us to down here in a minute, we're going to talk about the different impact studies you can do that talk to traffic and, and stuff and enrolling those groups as part of your team as well. It's a team effort. As you can see, this is a huge list. Real estate attorney, there's a lot of legal descriptions and uh, back and forth, especially when you're master planning with the city, a huge project, done that. Uh, uh, multiple times now and what you have is a master development agreement with the city and it lays out the project and every aspect of the project. You obviously want an attorney, attorney to be involved in that, the city's attorneys involved in that as well as the city staff and everything like that. So make sure you have a really good real estate attorney that's good with uh, cities and real estate law and understanding what what the city can do and what the city can't do. We have currently a project right now where we're saying, hey, city, that's great that you're saying that's a condition, but in reality, it shouldn't be a condition. It's, you can only talk to code. If we went to um, your condition, that's because we're accommodating, just realize that, and it's, it's not based on any requirement that we have to do. And so they do a really good job in helping you maintain uh, the right position in light with the city and its council and its um, voting bodies so that you're always in a lane that's not being encroached too much by the city, but just, just enough to allow you to accommodate some of their concerns and stuff like that. They bring out good concerns all the time, but we just don't want them to overstep their bounds. And so that's really important to have a really good real estate attorney. You have real estate agents. Uh, real estate agents are a key component in this. Obviously, they're gonna bring buyers, they're networked. They're also gonna help you sell off your stuff. Real estate agents are really important to the process. Make sure that you Find the right guys, the right individuals that actually know how to market your product in that geographical area. There's always an 80-20 or 90-10 rule where, you know, there's 10% doing the 90% or 20% doing the 80% in that industry. We always try to find the, the movers and shakers and make sure that we're in line with them and we start a marketing process that leads to their success and the project success as well. So have that in the, your considerations and your performance. Um, the other thing that we have is we have a water traffic impact groups. We kind of talked to some of the traffic study uh, needs that Utah is going to require for your access onto their roads. There's also water study that cities will want to take a look at and make sure that you're bringing enough water to the table or that the city can provide you enough water or that their utilities, uh, their, their water lines have the capacity and different things that are important. And then the impact study is what kind of e economic growth are you bringing? What's your project? This helps tells, tell the story to the city staff and council and community. What are you bringing to the table? What value are you bringing to the table? So these guys are really important individuals that do these studies that help your project um, go a long ways in getting a buy-in from the community and enrollment onto your team from these different community and, and recommended and voting bodies. Um, so that's, that's another one. And then we talked to uh, landscapers. A lot of times you have to have a landscape plan. So you need to enroll a landscaper to help you with that, especially if you're going vertical. 
with a product like a town apartment there's some open space involved and there's you know park strips and different things a lot of times they want to see those landscape engineer plans so that they can kind of see and get an eye for what it is you're bringing to the community that way. So that's really important to get a real good landscaper that can articulate your plan and really knows what they're doing. Um, project manager, now we're starting to talk about internal team. Always make sure you have somebody that's experienced that knows what he's doing, that can oversee the project side of it. Obviously, I can't be in the all day to day. I meet with my project managers and acquisition guys and, and team to help move projects along and bring my experience to the table. But a lot of times I'm leaning on their experience and their day to day engagement with the project and making sure that they're articulating and navigating uh, the process correctly. So that's important. Uh, you want to also have a good ex excavation company. In the past, I've been in a scenario where we thought it was going to be a good excavation company and it ended up not being and they ended up disappearing and ended up not finishing the process and that just cost us more money. And we ended up with uh, uh, a missing pipe in a, in a new road and we had to dig up the new road and put in a pipe. That was very um, challenging. And then also we've been in a scenario where an excavator went and willy-nilly his excavation and just had um, his utility lines out of what we call a public utility easement. And so there's normally on every plan project, there's a utility easement where these utility companies can access the, the utilities in, at future dates in case there's a problem. And so there's this easement on your property that allows for that. Well, this guy went out of the utility easement all over the place. And if you know anything about utility lines, they don't really stretch. And so what we had to do is we had to go back to the landowners and ask for more easement on some cases and where people weren't willing to give us uh, uh, easements, new easements. We had our utility guy have to dig it up and resituate it. So that was problematic and that was tough. And we had to deal with that and attorneys got involved and everything like that. But it, we were we were super successful in the end and everybody enjoyed the project and liked it. So it, obviously, again, it's a relationship thing and we had bit established rapport with all the different home buyers and stuff like that to a degree where it worked out. So again, just you never know what's gonna come up, so just make sure that you can uh, have all these things organized. Then you have a, a building contractor you want to make sure that you have the right contractors in their sub base and understand that you don't have a custom sub base when you're trying to do 60 or 70 or 100 lots. You, you want something more uh, fast paced than that. Some sub bases are used to certain product type and not others. Just make sure that you have the right contractors involved, that they're providing the right sub base that is actually handling your project. So. That's really important. Then you have your bookkeeping, accounting is super crucial, always making sure that money in, money out is being tracked and it's balanced. Don't get to the end of your project scatterbrained with receipts everywhere and no idea of where the project is or how much out of uh, budget you are. I've seen it time and time again in the industry that bookkeeping can be a game changer. It can allow you to know when a problem's really coming your way and when you're just sporadic and you're not ahead of the game with your bookkeeping, then at the end you end up in a tough scenario. So make sure that uh, you have a good bookkeeping team and you're tracking what's going on financially within the project. You'll get in a lot of legal trouble uh, from mismanagement side if you don't and you'll get in a lot of relationship heartburn if you don't you know ahead of time let people know of a coming problem or that you're outside of your budget or any of that stuff communication is key earlier on and so the the more you're on point with your budget and your bookkeeping the better off the project's going to be and then lastly you have marketing or at least not lastly, because there's so many other options to talk about here, but marketing is a true component 
of being able to actually find your bottom line and your win because you can only sell what somebody wants to buy. If they don't want to buy, then you're not going to be able to sell it. So it's really crucial for you to have the right marketing team that knows who they're going after, that they have a very poignant and pinpoint approach to getting out to the potential buyers of your project to fulfill it because absorption is key because a lot of times going to investors and stuff and lenders, a lot of times you have interest on money that's accumulating and stuff like that. Although we try to live in a cash environment as much as we can, if you borrow money, that money will start to consume the deal. If you borrow money in equity, even more so. So I'm not a guy that does both uh, money and equity. We try not to do that. It just gets you in trouble for a lot of different reasons and we can talk to that. But if you're having to ask for money just to get to the debt, you're probably trying to bite off something that you shouldn't be chewing. It's more than you can chew on and you're ending up in a tough situation financially. So this was our process of walking you guys through the key development team or process. And hopefully this lets you see a little bit about how much experience we have, about our understanding of the industry. And please call us for any help along the way and let us know if there's uh, any facet of this that you need help with, even if we're just giving you pointers or our personal experience or our personal connections, we're willing to do that. We want to be of a blessing and a service, like we always say, anytime, anywhere, however which way we can. So reach out to us at mcclarycompany.com and we'd love to help you build your development team and be successful with your project. Thank you.